So what I want to do here is look at solving a more general class of integrals involving the direct delta function. So last time, and so far, we've been looking at integrals that roughly you could write them like integral minus infinity to infinity. That doesn't have to be minus infinity to infinity. Could be, could have some finite bounds. But we're integrating some function times delta of x, and maybe we shift it. And then we know how to solve these integrals. We get, we, we pick out f of x naught at, at that point where the delta function spikes up. So we, 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 we've been working with this. We're familiar with this. Now let's look at the following integral. So let's look at a new example. Integral minus infinity to infinity delta, and this is where things are going to change, delta of x squared minus 1 dx. So what's happening here? In this case now, we're changing the argument of our delta function. Before, our delta function was something linear. It was x, maybe plus or minus a constant. Now we have a function in, inside of the delta function. So let's think a little bit about what what we think this should what this should look like and what the properties of this thing you know what we expect to happen well one thing is that we know that the contribution to this integral comes from when the argument of the delta function is equal to zero and so what does that mean that means that up here in this original case we got a single contribution because the only time that the delta function or, or the argument of the delta function was equal to zero was when x was equal to x naught now there are two values of x for which this argument is equal to zero. We have plus and minus one. So we know that we expect there to be two terms on this right hand side. There should be one term corresponding to x equals one and one term corresponding to x equals minus one. And then the other thing that we might expect is that since this is no longer linear, this is a quadratic, there should be some type of volume factor or, or some, type of, uh, yeah, some type of integration factor that pops out in front. And so I'm not going to derive this, but I'll, I'll write down up here the property uh, that we want to use in order to solve this integral. And I'll explain what it means. So the property is that delta of g of x, some, some arbitrary function of x, is equal to, well, what are we doing? We're going to take a sum over all of the zeros of the function. So all, all of the points where all, all of the values of x for which g of x is equal to 0 delta of x minus x i over absolute value g prime of x i. And I'll circle this because this is one of the most important delta function properties out there. So let's, let's break down a little bit more what, what, what exactly this means. So what we're saying here is that for every instance in which this function g of x has a zero, for, for every x for which it's equal to zero, each of those are going to contribute one term, and that term is going to be a delta function at that point, so we're still picking out that point where it's zero, but it's going to have this volume factor, which is, uh, is, which is given by g prime evaluated at that point with the absolute value. Uh, and, and this is sort of what we might expect from doing a change of variables. We would expect to pull out some 1 over and then some derivative of the function. Uh, so, okay, there, there, there's our property. Let's actually apply it to, to, this, uh, to this example we have over here. So in this case, what's happening? Well, we know we have two zeros, 1 and minus 1. So we know that this is going to be uh, still an integral from minus infinity to infinity. But now we have two terms. We have delta of x minus 1. So I'll, I'll look at the, the root equal to 1 first. Divided by, well, let's, let's, let's think this through real quick. So uh, what's our g prime of x here? Well, our, 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 I guess first, what's our g of x? Our g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. So our g prime of x is equal to 2x. OK, great. So that means that. Uh, this first term corresponding to the root x equals 1 is going to be delta of x minus 1 divided by the absolute value of 2x, or just 2 in this case. All right, there's, there's our first contribution. Uh, what about the second contribution? So we're also going to have something for 
x equals minus one. So we're gonna get delta of x plus one divided by, and then same thing. So here, x is equal to minus one. So this is gonna be minus two with absolute values. So absolute value minus two, also known as two. Um, okay, so this is great. So we, we've taken this integral over here, which we didn't initially know how to solve. And we've reduced it to a sum of two integrals, each with a delta function that we actually know how to solve. And, and this is this is straightforward to do. Uh, we know that uh, integrate this guy, we're going to get a one over one half. Same thing here, we're going to get a one over two, so another one half. So this whole thing comes out to be one. Uh, so I think that's all that I want to do here. This 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 property right here is probably, in my opinion, the most important delta function property. This this ends up being used all the time, uh, especially in physics. And so I'll, I'll, I'm planning on doing some more examples in future videos. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the approach for solving integrals of this kind.